Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 31 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about how will cloud computing expansion in Australia be impacted by IBM landing a one billion Australian dollar contract with the Australian government to power everything from hardware and cloud services to AI, quantum computing and blockchain research. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips as a consumer of cloud. Hi, Dave. Great to see you on the Australia show again. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is a great topic. It's exciting news. This was all over the Australian press over the last, the last couple of weeks and exciting to talk about it. Yeah, it really is, Dave. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have you on the show on this one because I think it's a very interesting topic and very exciting considering what is going on in Australia at the moment. So what do you think this will mean for cloud computing and the expansion in Australia, Dave? Well, I, I think that uh, in, they're probably going to build some on-demand services really kind of as part of the mix. But, uh, you know, what scares me about this is it looks like it's a hardware contract, specifically who they're dealing with. And it's going to be a lot of hard work, kind of a billion dollars. You can buy a, a, a ton of servers for that. Um, so I would, you know, advise the Australian government if they're working with a provider, you know, that they get a mix of on-demand computing systems and a mix of, uh, of on-premise systems as they're moving forward and not necessarily try to expand their data center uh, space going forward. This is actually looks like a pretty efficient contract based on what they're getting. Um, I mean, in the United States, we're just used to, you know, $40 billion contracts, you know, pretty much going all the time in terms of the U.S. government. I, I just think that the uh, Australian government, you know, looks like they're probably going to use this thing more effectively and efficiently than they do in other countries. But, you know, the, the same caveats, you know, kind of um, apply. In other words, um, you know, let's not buy a lot of capital equipment. Let's not uh, let's do as, on, as much on demand as we can. Um, let's make sure we're buying the right equipment. If we're buying the hardware, make, let's make sure we're negotiating uh, up, upgrade deals with the vendors going forward so we're able to turn them in the old equipment for new equipment. You know, a lot of the things that, uh, you know, really are common sense in the business, but the government seems to kind of fall by the wayside, not just the Australian government, but pretty much every government that I work with. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think there is a real pain point around software being out of date really quickly. Almost it's come to market and there's something already new in the pipeline, isn't there? More often than not with like an iPhone, for argument's sake. You know, we're already, we're already two or three models behind, you know, what, what they've developed already. You know, we, we're, we're led to believe anyway. But it's really interesting you say that. I mean, there's, there's been a few big deals that IBM, have, I think, have, uh, have, have managed to sort of, you know, close in, in recent times with regards to, you know, working with various large banks and entities enterprises across the world and I think there's been um, you know some interest with regards to working in Denmark's uh, area as well for a, a 320 million contract so I think this IBM are really closing some big deals at the moment yeah I, I, I think you got to hand it to IBM I mean they've been um, you know kind of dabbling in the cloud space and uh, they have a lot of smart people who work there and they have a lot of, a lot of good equipment and technology that they sell uh, and I think that they're able to kind of sell directly to the government with a you know very mature um, channel that they have within selling into the government space. Um, I would though you know hold IBM's feet to the fire in the fact that we're going to need application refreshes, hardware refreshes, and most of the stuff I would want to have on demand. Uh, so they're doing things in the back end to in essence upgrade the software and hardware and without us having to, you know, maintain, replace, operate, uh, and debug, you know, the equipment that comes in, just like every other piece of equipment that's out there. It doesn't matter if it's IBM or Dell or HP or whomever. So my advice would be to the Australian government is to, and this may be too late, being the fact the contract's already been awarded, but, you know, ensure that IBM is going to basically provide, you know, the best of breed technology, whether that's on demand or basically a hardware platform, and that the upgrade cycles are really going to be part of the deal because we live in a world now where, you know, I, I um, cringe at buying hardware. I mean, even my personal hardware you were talking on right now, it's just because it's, you know, a year, it's the most, you know, uh, vastly accelerated depreciation as depreciating asset that I have. 
And ultimately, this is something that uh, I don't think the government can take going forward. And I think the realities are kind of, you know, made for the on-demand model. The fact that their their procurement cycles are so long, and probably not as long in Australia, but it certainly is in the states, and that they have to rethink their architectures iteratively going forward. And if they keep up with the hardware in doing that, it's just going to be overwhelmingly uh, uh, obtrusive in terms of how the costs are. So, you know, let's think differently about how we're consuming technology. So even if it's on demand that comes out of a cloud or on demand in terms of hardware resources, we should really put the onus on the vendors to make sure that they're providing us the best of read technology and make sure that's in the contract. We're holding the feet to the fire. And as taxpayers, I don't pay Australian taxes, but you do. Um, you know, this is something that should be first and foremost in people's thinking in terms of how we're going to consume technology from the government. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. I mean, one thing I remember now, actually, at the end of March this year, uh, Microsoft is, is actually subsidizing, I think, that 6,000 public sector workers in training for the Azure platform. So it's a real interesting mix they're going to be uh, bringing to the table there. I'm sure, I'm sure Azure and IBM are quite happy with that. Yeah, we should have a cage match of uh, the Microsoft executives and the IBM executives, see who emerges, you know, like uh, Mad Max Thunderdome, you know, something like that. I just, uh, I, these things going forward, it goes one way or the other, but ultimately, you know, government can play uh, both sides against the middle. You know, this is about, they have bargaining power. The fact they have lots of money, that's 740 million Aussie dollars out to spend. That's not, that's no small change. So leverage your power you know, leverage your funding to go off and get the best deal. So yeah, that leads me on nicely actually to ask you your top three tips uh, as a consumer of cloud for the organizations. Yeah, number one, keep the big picture in mind. I, I think that we have a tendency to kind of fall off the, the, the ridge, so to speak, in terms of buying hardware. Um, we get excited about quantum, I saw lots of buzzwords in there, quantum computing, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, blockchain all these sorts of things. Well, what does that mean in terms of our hardware infrastructure, network infrastructure that we need going forward and how we're going to do the reset, re refresh cycles? So if we're going to play around with blockchain in 2019 or 2020, which it sounds like it is, what does that mean in impact to hardware and software? Well, the reality is it doesn't take a huge amount of servers you know, to run blockchain, but it does AI and it does machine learning based systems. And so Make sure you understand where we're heading and kind of the larger vision as to where we're going. And I think government has a tendency not to pay attention to that as much because they think very tactically, very funding oriented, project oriented, things like that. Watch spending on capital equipment. I get nervous when the government buys um, hardware uh, these days because it never goes away. You know, I, I'm you know, dealing with clients or I dealt with clients in the past and uh, not naming names or naming governments where I'm dealing with, you know, 30 year old equipment. Uh, because the stuff just doesn't die and they just keep maintaining it and going forward with it and it becomes very archaic difficult to get people to work on it and they can't replace it because they have so much of a sunk cost and investment into building those systems so we need to think more iterative in terms of how we're building these things where we're going to take it where it's going to go and make sure that the con uh, continuous improvement cycles are basically part of it or else it's going to be this old hacky piece of equipment that no one likes and doesn't do a good job for the citizens of the government that, uh, that, that, it's, that it's trying to serve. And never be afraid to change your mind. So in this whole cycle, and I haven't read the contract, and I don't, they're probably not going to release it, but you know, uh, the fact of the matter is I'm going to go with on-demand systems. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, leverage things and through a multi-tenant architecture, which means leveraging cloud-based computing. And, and really kind of, you know, shift on a dime in terms of where we're going. I mean, this contract goes through 2023. That's an awful long time. Uh, and so lots of changes are going to occur. We're going to be talking about completely different things in five years from now than we are now. And so always be afraid to shift your direction, shift your spending and shift your loyalties. Great three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. And thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. It's always a pleasure. Fantastic. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. It's a very interesting deal, and it'd be interesting to watch how this contract pans out in the future. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks again for watching. Until next week.